10, NASA hacked. So first off, how do things like this from NASA even manage to get leaked? Well apparently by British guys like Gary McKinnon hacking into their system. Between the years 2001 and 2002, Gary broke into 97 different government computers, believing NASA was hiding signs of alien life because of thousands of pictures of UFOs he found hidden away. A former NASA employee had said that satellite images were checked for UFOs and deleted if they showed any evidence, and Gary decided he wanted to break into NASA in order to validate these claims. He says that he found four different folders titled filtered, unfiltered, processed, and raw. He says that his slow internet connection only made him able to download one image before he lost access to the rest of them, the picture apparently being a clear image of a cigar shaped spacecraft. Gary believes that NASA is hiding a wealth of UFO evidence from the public. In our number nine spot today, we have 2022 AE1. Earlier this year, in January, as the year began, scientists were watching an asteroid dubbed 2022 AE1 that became the riskiest one observed in over a decade. The initial observations of this asteroid placed it impacting with Earth on roughly July 4th, 2023, which would mean that there would not be enough time to deflect it, and this asteroid was large enough to do some real damage should it strike an area. Yeah, it was most definitely a cause for concern. There was a week where the moon outshone this asteroid and experts weren't able to see it and continue tracking its path, but once the moon was out of this phase, the risk seemed to have diminished. As of now, this asteroid has been taken off the risk list, but who knows? It seems as though things can change quite quickly and unexpectedly outside of the cozy home and protection of our atmosphere. In our number 8 spot today, we have 99942 Apophis. This little asteroid has a diameter of about a fifth of a mile, and it is currently sitting at number 3 on the Palermo scale. This is something that I'll probably refer to again today, so let's just talk about it real quick. The Palermo Technical Impact Scale is a scale that is used by astronomers to rate the potential risk and hazard of impact impact of a near-Earth object, or an NEO. It used the combined information and data of the probability of impact coupled with the estimated kinetic yield, which basically just shows us how likely and how badly an asteroid would mess us up, re the dinosaurs. So back to Apophis, this asteroid is at rank number 3, so it's the third thing we gotta worry about. When it was discovered in 2004, astronomers gave it a 1 in 60 chance of striking Earth in May of 2029 on Friday the 13th of all days. If it doesn't strike Earth, with the naked eye, we'll be able to see it pass at a distance of roughly 8,600 miles. But if it does strike Earth, we'll also be able to see it with the naked eye, just at a much closer distance. Because of how close this passing asteroid is going to be, if the asteroid passes us at a slightly different angle than current predictions, that is the possibility of a collision in 2036 or 2069. In our number 7 spot today, we have 2020 CD3. In February of 2020, astronomers found this asteroid asteroid, which is a tiny near-Earth asteroid or mini-moon that orbits the Sun, but it does make really close approaches to our Earth-Moon system, and it can even temporarily enter Earth's orbit. It is the second temporary satellite of Earth discovered in situ. Based on its trajectory, this asteroid was captured by Earth around 2016 or 2017, but it likely escaped the gravitational influence of Earth around May of 2020. Even the asteroid didn't want to stick around for the pandemic. 2020 CD3 is likely to make another close pass at Earth in 2044, but it hopefully won't be captured by Earth this time because of its greater approach distance. While this little thing is flying through space and it makes its nice little frequent visits to us, the good news is that it is relatively small in terms of asteroids, so it's not likely an imminent threat to humanity. In our number 6 spot today, we have 1538142001 WN5. This asteroid is classified as a small asteroid but that does not mean that this thing is completely harmless. This asteroid has an orbit that passes that of Earth's, making it a near-Earth asteroid, but it is also a potentially hazardous one because of how close it can get. This asteroid orbits the Sun every 818 days or 2.24 years, and it gets as far away from the Sun as 2.51 astronomical units. Like I mentioned, this guy is classified as a small asteroid, but with a diameter of 0.9 kilometers, it is larger than about 97% of other small asteroids. It is said to be about the size of the Golden Gate Bridge, which is just absolutely insane to think about. The pass by the Earth that this asteroid is going to make that is the most 
concerning to scientists is going to happen on June 26th, 2028. Right now it is projected to be passing by at a distance of 248,700 kilometers, but when we're talking about a flying space object that's getting a little too close for comfort. It is said that during this close approach, the asteroid will be visible with just binoculars. In our number 5 spot today, we have 2008 DB. This is an asteroid that is said to be about the size of a school bus, and its orbit is one that crosses the orbit of Earth. This asteroid is definitely classified as being near Earth because of the fact that it is less than one astronomical unit away from Earth upon its closest approaches. This asteroid orbits the Sun, and it does so in a little longer than an Earth year, about every 395 days, so 1.08 years. One thing I found really interesting about this asteroid is that the way they were able to estimate its size was by how bright it is and how this asteroid reflects light. Science is just so fascinating. It is said that 2008 DB has nine close approaches to Earth in the coming decades, so Fingers crossed, all goes well. In our number four spot today, we have 2014 HB177. This asteroid is quite similar to the last one. It is also around the size of a school bus, and it is an asteroid that is near Earth and often crosses with our orbit. This near Earth asteroid actually had a relatively close pass by Earth just last year in 2021 when it came within 10 million kilometers of Earth. That sounds like a lot, but in space, Terms, it's really not that much. This asteroid orbits the sun about every 430 days or 1.18 years, but it rotates on its own axis quite quickly, completing a rotation every 0.02 hours. The next close approach of this asteroid to Earth is coming on May 6th, 2034, when this asteroid will be 514,556 kilometers away from Earth, but it doesn't stop here. There are seven upcoming dates, some of which are in our lifetime, that have been assessed as having an impact risk in these very close approach scenarios. The most risky right now is dated as May 3rd, 2085. In our number three spot today, we have 2010 RF-12. This asteroid is one that orbits the sun every 399 days or 1.09 years, and at its closest point, its orbit is startlingly close to Earth's. When this asteroid was first observed, it was actually thought to have the highest probability of striking Earth, but thankfully that number has since dropped in the last few years. Just Recently, however, this asteroid had one close approach with Earth, passing at a distance of a little over 10 million kilometers. From now until 2095, there is thought to be 13 upcoming close approaches, with the final one being at the very small distance of 47,000 kilometers. Thankfully, the good news is that this asteroid is on the smaller size when it comes to asteroids, which means that should something go awry and this asteroid were to impact Earth, it likely wouldn't be the Earth-shattering, humanity-destroying asteroid that we all fear. In our number two spot today, we have 101955 Bennu. This asteroid was first discovered on September 11th, 1999, and it is a potentially hazardous object to us here on Earth. There is currently a 1 in 1,800 chance that this asteroid is going to impact Earth between 2178 and 2290. I know that's not really in our lifetime, but it's not very far off, and that's kind of frightening. The day that this asteroid has the greatest chance of impacting Earth is on September 24th, 2182. This asteroid was actually named after the ancient Egyptian mythological bird that is often associated with the sun, creation, and rebirth. We know more about this asteroid than many others because there was actually a mission to this asteroid in order to try and collect samples of it. On the 3rd of December 2008, the Osiris Rex spacecraft reached this asteroid after traveling to it for two years. Not only did it orbit it for a while to map it out and get its measurements, but in 2020 it landed on the asteroid, and last year in May of 2021 it departed from the asteroid carrying a sample of it. Maybe next year it will return to Earth and help us learn even more about the history of this asteroid. In our number one spot today we have 2021 QM1. This asteroid was first discovered on August 28th, 2021, and at the time of its discovery it wasn't of much concern. But follow-up observations revealed something very different. It suddenly rang alarm bells that it might be on a path to a near miss with Earth around 2052. This asteroid is measured at about 50 meters in diameter, which is said to, should it impact Earth, be the equivalent of about 6 megatons of TNT or 400 times the strength of a nuclear bomb. 
just not very good and very obviously of concern. To make all the nervous scientists more nervous, shortly after discovery, this asteroid disappeared behind the sun out of their view. They waited patiently and used the very large telescope as much as they could, and when the asteroid peeked out from behind the sun, they were ready, and it was then that they managed to capture an image of the faintest asteroid ever observed. This observation thankfully gave them some good news. This asteroid likely won't hit Earth in 2052, and for now, for the foreseeable future, it shouldn't be on a collision course with Earth. They of course are going to continue observing it though and checking in, just to make sure that continues to be the case. Starting off the number 10 is the underwater base. Now Argentine researcher Marcelo Igazusta found what he believes to be an underwater alien base. The object is 8.5 miles long and it seems to be a pyramid of some kind. It's located right off the coast of Mexico near the ancient Aztec and Mayan pyramids which could be coincidental or totally random. Since this pyramid has an 8.5 mile base, that catapults it into being the biggest pyramid in the world. Forget Egypt, humans could have never built something like that, especially underwater, so Marcelo believes only aliens could have accomplished it. I mean, cut some more slack, we're better than that. He believes either the base was there from before or an alien craft landed in the water and was built to do so and they just never left. In our number 9 spot today we have 99942 Apophis. This little asteroid has a diameter of about a fifth of a mile and it is currently sitting at number 3 on the Palermo scale. This is something I'll refer to again today so let's just talk about it real quick. The Palermo Technical Impact Scale is a scale that is used by astronomers to rate the potential risk and hazard of impact of a near Earth. Earth object or an NEO. It used the combined information and data of the probability of impact coupled with the estimated kinetic yield, which basically just shows us how likely and how badly an asteroid would mess us up, re the dinosaurs. So back to Apophis. This asteroid is at rank number three, so it's the third thing we gotta worry about. When it was discovered in 2004, astronomers gave it a 1 in 60 chance of striking Earth in May of 2029 on Friday the 13th of all days. If it doesn't strike Earth, Earth, with the naked eye, we'll be able to see it pass at a distance of roughly 18,600 miles. But if it does strike Earth, we'll also be able to see it with the naked eye, just at a much closer distance. Because of how close this passing asteroid is going to be, if the asteroid passes us at a slightly different angle than current predictions, there is the possibility of collision in 2036 or 2069. In our number eight spot today, we have the Swift Tuttle Comet. This is obviously a comet, and while it isn't exactly orbiting Earth, it is in an orbit that causes it to make repeated close approaches to both us here on Earth as well as our sweet little moon. Here's the thing, we keep trying to calculate the next passage of the comet, I say we like I'm doing any kind of calculating, experts keep trying to calculate the next passage of the comet, but it's always off by like 15-ish days. What's also super cool is that the nucleus of this comet is quite large, which is truly concerning for us, that's not the cool part, but when experts realized that, they started looking back through texts and documents of the past to see if this comet had been observed before, and it seems like it had been in 69 BC and 188 AD. That is so cool! The good news is that for now, if all the calculations are correct, we don't have to worry about anything in our lifetime. Sorry to those living in the year 3000 though. In our number 7 spot today we have Envisat. This is a large environmental satellite that was launched by the European Space Agency on March 1st, 2002, and it was the world's largest civilian Earth observation satellite. It lasted for twice its expected life length as it monitored the environmental health of Earth for a decade, but in April of 2012, without any warning, it totally stopped all communications. This means that its status and location are completely unknown. The size of this thing is one of the main concerning points of this, as it is 85 by 32 feet and weighs a common cool 18,000 pounds. Since we don't know where it is and have no control over it, it's simply up to space and the laws of physics. Now. It is predicted that the uncontrolled descent of the satellite to Earth will likely take place over the next 150 years or so, and it threatens the risk of injury and damage. There's also a 15-30% to 30 chance that it'll collide with other space junk and cause a major fragmentation event. In our number 6 spot today we have 29075. Okay, 
We talked about number three on that scale, so are you ready for number one? On the Palermo scale, for the last several years, the asteroid 29075 has been given the highest rating because of its large size coming in with a diameter about two thirds of a mile. This would have absolutely devastating effects on the biosphere and climate if it were to strike Earth, again, re the dinosaurs. There is good news about this one though. If it does hit Earth, we'll all be long gone and we will miss it entirely. The chance of an encounter doesn't get too close for comfort until 2880, so for now, we're in the clear. In our lifetime, we only have to worry about, well, a bunch of other things on this list and student debt. In our number five spot today, we have the Hubble Space Telescope. The Hubble Space Telescope was launched in 1990 by NASA in cooperation with the European Space Agency, and together they placed the very first space observatory into orbit. Something that we only dreamed of for hundreds of years finally accomplished. Since 1990, the Hubble has produced over 1.3 million images of the solar system, the stars, and the galaxies. It is one of the most incredible scientific creations in terms of space exploration, and it really set the tone for all of the advancements we've had since. It's been in orbit for a long time, and the 27,000 pound solar powered observatory is coming close to retirement, and that means that NASA has a couple of options. They can either craft up a controlled return to Earth, they can boost it higher into orbit, or they can try to design a new mission to increase the longevity of the scope. But basically, they need to make their minds up because the longer it stays in orbit, the more it decays due to Earth's pull. This could have disastrous results as an uncontrolled re-entry can occur sometime between 2028 and 2030. Imagine, the thing that's helped us so much turns its back on us. And so it begins, the robot takeover. In our number four spot today, we have 2020 CD3. In February of 2020, astronomers found 2020 CD3, which is a tiny near-Earth asteroid or mini-moon that orbits the sun, but it does make really close approaches to our Earth-Moon system, and it can even temporarily enter Earth's orbit. It is the second temporary satellite of Earth discovered in situ. Basically, on its trajectory, this asteroid was captured by Earth around 2016 or 2017, but it likely escaped the gravitational influence of Earth around May 2020. Even the asteroid didn't want to stick around for the pandemic. 2020 CD3 is likely to make another close pass at Earth in 2044, but it hopefully won't be captured by Earth this time because of its greater approach distance. While this little thing is flying through space and makes its nice little freak visits to us, the good news is that it is relatively small in terms of asteroids, so it's not like an imminent threat to humanity yet. In our number three spot today, we have Cosmos 1818. Despite the name, this was a nuclear spy satellite that was launched by the Soviet Union in 1987. By this time, there was already another nuclear satellite that had fallen out of orbit and left a trail of radioactive debris over Canada, but we said, what the hell? The Canadians began apologizing to us for some reason, so let's just try it again. The Soviet Union launched Cosmos 1818 into higher orbit than the previous one to try and avoid another similar situation, but in 2008, that proved Proved to not work at all when the satellite began breaking down and leaking what is thought to be coolant. The breakdown is thought to have occurred from either some kind of a collision or simply just a system failure. According to Russian sources, at the moment the satellite is expected to simply burn up in the atmosphere of Earth when it leaves orbit in 2045, but I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little suspicious about this. It seems like it can't just be that simple, but hey, I'm not Bill Nye, so what do I know? In our number two spot today, we have Snap 10A. This nuclear fission satellite was the first nuclear reactor placed into orbit, and it was part of a project that the US government was conducting where they were experimenting with power production in space. The SNAP stands for System for Nuclear Auxiliary Power. The satellite was launched in 1965, but was less than successful when it performed for merely 43 days before quitting out because of an electric system failure. So here's where things get a little concerning. The satellite is still currently in orbit, and it's expected to stay there for the next 3,000 years, which is great and happy and exciting exciting unless you're trying to travel through its orbit. But since none of us are astronauts and don't have that problem, we're good unless it collides with something else, which it is very vulnerable to do. This would potentially cause nuclear radiation to be released. Yeah, I mean, have you heard of Chernobyl? In our number one spot today, we have SL-16RB. That probably sounds like a name I just made up, but this is the name of a bunch of rocket boosters that are currently in the orbit of Earth. Most of them were launched by Russia and the Soviet Union between 1989 and 2000. 2007, and each booster weighs 9,000 kilograms and orbits at an altitude of 800 kilometers. Here's where this all becomes an issue though. There's 20 of these things in orbit, and should two of them collide? Well, the resulting debris would be absolutely catastrophic. Two 9,000 kilogram objects collide.
colliding would double the low Earth orbit debris, and as we already know, the amount we already have is a huge problem. Right now, these boosters are all orbiting together in clusters, but it's really a roll of the dice each year. The probability of collision goes up. So, yeah, things we don't normally talk about are actually pretty terrifying. Starting off this countdown, we have when duty calls. I mean, when you gotta go, you gotta go. You would just hope that no one was around to catch you. Don't want an old lady walking her dog to run into you, popping a squat behind a bush and letting one go. And you really don't want a Google car to pass by and catch you in the act and then publish it online for everyone to see. Because that's actually what happened to this guy. Poor dude was trying so hard to be discreet and he just couldn't win. What's worse is that his company's vehicle wasn't blurred. So now if his work sees this, it's probably very easy to identify him. Number nine, Edgar Mitchell. Astronaut Edgar Mitchell landed on the moon with the Apollo 14 mission and he also believed that aliens helped prevent a conflict between the United States and Russia. He claimed that top military officials were hiding evidence of unidentified flying objects and the fact that they were apparently often spotted hovering over White Sands testing range in New Mexico. In 2015 he said, White Sands was a testing ground for atomic weapons and that's what the extraterrestrials were interested in. They wanted to know about our military capabilities. My own experience talking to people has made it clear the ETs had been attempting to keep us from going to war and help create peace on earth. He stated that the military had given him loads of information on aliens and their interactions with Earth, and after he left NASA, he dedicated his life and studies to looking into extraterrestrial existence. Number eight, Mars photos. A man named Richard Hoagland believes that NASA knows a lot more about Mars than they're letting on. He believes that astronauts have been to Mars and that there is a plethora of evidence of alien life on Mars that NASA is insistent on covering up. During the Viking 1 orbit in 1976, NASA released various photographs of the surface of Mars, and some of them seem to show various different structures and one that apparently even looked like the Sphinx. This led people to believe that these structures had been built by aliens who lived on the Red Planet. Years later, in 1998, NASA took more pictures to debunk the theory, showing only rocks. But Richard and others believe that this is them trying to hide the truth and shrinking the structures that were previously on the planet. He also pulled up a NASA commissioned report from 1960 that recommended any future discoveries of alien life be hidden from the public so as not to disrupt the evolutionary flow of the century. Number 7. Sun Object Last video I talked about NASA cutting off their ISS feed when people believed that they saw a UFO falling towards the Earth. This one is a similar scenario, except it came from footage of the Sun. In May of 2012, a YouTube user posted a video of a mysterious object seen flying near the sun in NASA's broadcast. The video zooming in on the pyramid shaped object that many believe to be some sort of alien craft flying near the sun. A day later, NASA shut down the video feed. In a second video, the user said, this is a cover up to prevent us from seeing these things again. NASA must have seen this video and started making plans to change the way you and I are allowed to view it. NASA are clearly trying to stop us looking at the sun. Alien deniers may say that this is just some sort of camera glitch or sun flare, but I think we all know the truth. People telling you not to look at the sun is actually just propaganda so we don't see the aliens. And I'm just going to say quickly for legal reasons that I do not actually condone staring into the sun. Number 6. The Cube This also isn't the only case of NASA cutting off the sun live stream after suspicious activity. It happened just this year in May as well. On May 2nd at around 1 in the afternoon, a large black cube appeared to come out of the sun, visible for about 2 seconds. A glitch then appeared on the live stream covering a large part of it, and after it clears, the cube is gone. An expert posted this to YouTube going over the footage and claims that this is evidence of some sort of alien spaceship coming out of the sun. Perhaps they have a secret alien base in there. Also, I say expert because he is a self-proclaimed extraterrestrial 
industrial expert, and honestly, I'm gonna start calling myself that as well. You guys are watching a video from an expert now, people. Most people in the comments claim that this was just some sort of square-shaped solar flare, while another even claimed it was the manifestation of an angel gaining power from the sun. Number five, evidence scale. This one is not so much leaked, but was instead part of an announcement that NASA was going to become more serious about trying to discover life on other planets. They announced that they are going to have a scale to measure extraterrestrial evidence so that it's not as black and white as life or no life. Proposed by NASA chief scientist Jim Green, the scale includes seven different levels, which ranks evidence of life based on their environment and the opinions of the scientific community at large. The highest levels on the scale are of course level 6, verifying signs of life with several different instruments and level 7, and on different locations on the world. They said in a statement, We need a better way to share the excitement of our discoveries and demonstrate how each discovery builds on the next, so that we can bring the public and other scientists along on the journey. This new eagerness to bring people along on the journey of discovery could be a sign that they're warming us up to revealing aliens. Number 4. Meteorite In 2011, a NASA scientists came out claiming that they had found legitimate evidence of alien life. This being from fossils inside a meteorite that landed on Earth. Richard Hoover said that he found evidence of what is basically microscopic little alien bugs, or as the science people call it, filaments and other structures that appear to be fossils of algae known as cyanobacteria, little alien bugs. Laboratory tests done found no evidence that they were the remains of Earth-based organisms, despite being slightly similar to organisms that have been found in the waterways of Spain. Hoover says that the lack of nitrogen, which is essential for life on Earth, proves that they are the remains of extraterrestrial life forms that grew on the parent bodies of the meteorites when liquid water was present, long before the meteorites entered the Earth's atmosphere. This isn't the first time that this sort of evidence has been found on meteorites, and it probably won't be the last. Number 3. Anonymous We know that the infamous Gary McKinnon managed to hack into the NASA databases and find secret UFO pictures, but did you know that the group known as Anonymous did it as well? In 2017, they made a 12 and a half minute long YouTube video where they claimed to have gained access to secret NASA information, telling people that NASA was covering up the discovery of alien life. They said that the organization had recently found 219 new planet candidates, 10 having very similar conditions to Earth. Because of this, the group came to believe that NASA was either incredibly close to finding alien life or had already found it. They also stated that this was a sign NASA was getting closer and closer to revealing the truth about aliens. And while many people brushed it off as being ridiculous, we now know that NASA has just revealed their new UFO study, so Anonymous may have been closer to the truth than we thought. Number 2. Black Knight Satellite Alright, now let's get into some stuff that is a little more conspiratorial than usual, if that's even possible, and various different ways that people believe NASA is trying to cover stuff up, but apparently not doing a good enough job. There is a conspiracy that there is a satellite called the Black Knight Satellite, which was set up by aliens more than 12,000 years ago in order to spy on humans. Photos from the first shuttle trip to the International Space Station in 1998 appeared to show a large black object hovering over Earth, and people believed it was the first photographic evidence of the Black Knight satellite. All previous evidence from years before were just things like radio signals. They also believed that back in the early 1900s, Nikola Tesla actually picked up signals from the Black Knight. Whether or not you actually believe in the existence of the satellite spying on us apparently doesn't matter anymore as it was reportedly shot down by the Illuminati in 2017. Number 1. Hollow Earth Alright, this one's not so much about aliens, but trust me on this, I am a self-proclaimed extraterrestrial expert, okay? In 2016, one YouTube user suggested that NASA was trying to cover up the existence of something at the North and South Poles. Old satellite images of Earth from space appear to apparently show some sort of a massive hole at each end of the Earth, what they claim to be an entrance. If you're not 
sold on the flat earth theory, then let me introduce you to hollow earth. As its name suggests, the truth is apparently that the inside of the earth is hollow and actually contains inner earth complete with its own sun. Explorers have apparently seen the inner earth firsthand when flying over the North Pole. So this is just a cool crazy conspiracy and it doesn't actually really relate to aliens, but I just wanted to talk about it. So as an alien expert, I'm just going to say that the inner earth is actually where all the aliens live and they control us from the inside. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the missile test. I personally subscribe to the idea that there probably aren't any areas of space that would be a good place to blow something up, but apparently, really recently, Russia chose a really bad one. On November 15th, just weeks ago, a missile test occurred just a short 300 miles above Earth, and when the 4,850 pound satellite exploded, it created a cloud of fragments that set off the emergency response on the International Space Station, which was a little too close for comfort. Like, man, there are people on there who are just trying to like grow a pepper and prove the Earth is round and stuff. The astronauts aboard awoke from their sleep to probably the most frightening alarm they've ever heard in their lives and had to prepare to possibly and quickly evacuate the space outpost. Luckily, they are all fine, but the explosion created a ton of orbital debris now that we are going to see the consequences of for the next few decades. We add more debris into the already crowded orbit of Earth faster than we clear it up, which creates problems for future spacecrafts and creates more potential collisions that need to be avoided at all costs. Coming in at number 9 is the Arctic landing. So okay, bit of fake advertisement, this one isn't located in the Arctic, it's actually located in Antarctica. Not the same thing you guys. Either way, Russian UFO enthusiast Valentin Degretev claims he found an alien crash site in Antarctica. There seems to be a saucer shaped dent in the snow like the flying saucer landed on its side and just went straight through the snow. I hope you got what I meant when I did that. <laughs> I mean, I need to speculate and offer other explanations like okay is the ice breaking apart underneath there and that's what's causing the slit but I feel like that's far fetched but then again so is a flying saucer but it is peculiar and it's surrounded by ridges and flat snow so it's just a big unexplainable anomaly I don't know guys is it just a random slit is it an alien saucer I don't really know at number 8 we have the Martian Twins. Now during the Kofun era in Japan, which was during 300 to 538 AD, they used to build Kofun tombs. And these tombs were for people of the ruling class and they were shaped like keyholes most commonly and surrounded by water. That's all well and good, but alien hunters spotted a mound on Mars that looked identical to one specific Kofun era tomb. Now they fully believe that the suspicious similarities between both features is evidence that Martians settled on Earth centuries ago after a catastrophic unknown event forced them to leave the red planet. They ended up building a similar structure on Earth and then going back to Mars when it was finally appropriate. But again, I feel like this whole theory is speculation. How do we know what this catastrophic unknown event was and if it even happened? If aliens have the technology to travel to another planet and set up camp there, surely they could have evaded whichever terrible thing happened on Mars? Is that too much to ask? I don't think it is. I don't think my expectations are that high, you guys. Plausible. Filling on number 7 slot is the alien base. Now back in April of this year, a few UFO hunters were searching Google Earth for some sus looking and boy did they find it. There's this really weird 500 meter long object off the coast of Antarctica that from the top looks like an iceberg but literally isn't. The left of it is oddly straight and the top has vertical ridges on it making it not look like an iceberg at all. According to UFO sightings hotspot it doesn't fit the description of an iceberg and I quote, I'm not an iceberg expert but this object is really peculiar and looks like a vessel disguised as an iceberg. I have to fully agree with you honestly, I feel like the Aliens were probably like, hey, just cover the top in an ice sheet. These dumb humans won't notice the difference. But we did. We are on to you. Dumb humans. May have taken us a few years, but we got there. Now at number six is bad parking. I just found this one hilarious because alien life is meant to be so advanced and ahead of us. And I look at this image and I'm like, were you drunk driving? Like this is shockingly bad. Now the image was located by YouTube channel Secure Team 10 who found it crash landed in a restricted part of Arizona with a white blacked out car parked next to it. CIA perhaps? Probably. Now the flying saucer looks really old fashioned if anything, like it's not slick or thin and I'm pretty sure it landed upside down which is what's really funny to me. Like how do you mess up a landing that badly? Maybe the aliens decide to take one of the old ones for a ride and then didn't realize how outdated it was and then boom, disaster, flipped it over. 
you're gonna be grounded when you get back to your planet. Coming in at number five is the slit. In the very remote British territory of South Georgia, a really strange thing was found in the snow. And no, we're not talking about my ex, but wow, he keeps popping up in these videos. Now, alien hunting YouTube channel Secure Team 10 found a slit in the snow that they claim has all the signs that point to a UFO crash landing. It has the exact trajectory of an angular flying object that came to a screeching halt in the snow. Now, the imprint isn't a plane, otherwise, we would have known. It's not a military craft. Or we would have known, and the crash is too narrow and small to be anything other than an alien craft. But I mean, I don't really know. I think calling every weird slit in the snow an alien crash landing is a bit of a cop out, but alien hunters clearly know better than I do, so I'ma just leave it to the experts. At number four is the flying saucer. Clearly, you can tell I'm running out of title ideas, and I mean, there's only so many different ways you can say spaceship, okay? Either way, YouTube channel Secure Team found an image on Google Earth they believe is a flying saucer. Located in the South Pole, the circular object in question is sticking out of a mountain amongst the snow. But the rocky areas around it are quite rigid and randomly cut, whereas this object is oddly round and like perfectly round at that. And I can't zoom in enough to tell if it's just a round cut of water that's randomly there or if it's actually alien aircraft. But since I've never seen alien aircraft, I don't even know even if I could zoom in, would I know? Who knows? Now there's like a thinner outline inside the actual outline of the round bit, which seems unnatural to me, like there's no way that bit's natural. Has to be man-made or or alien made. But I feel like zooming in more is necessary to get an actual conclusion, and alas, I can't do that. And I'm definitely not gonna go to Antarctica just to find out. But you can, and let me know if you do. Filling our number three slot is the floating island. Now, located in Argentina, back in 2016, UFO sightings daily fully believed this floating island was the entrance to an alien base. On Google Maps, it looks like a random crescent was cut out of the greenery in the area. Like, there's no other shape like that found nearby or on the continent or in the country for that matter. The island actually moves and rotates in a circle, and considering Argentina has had many UFO sightings over the years, it could could be possible that aliens have their base underneath this island. Never say never. Now, the slit could easily fit a 100 meter UFO through it, and no one has actually gone and explored the water beneath the floating island. I think it's just really weird how there's like an oddly perfect circular island that magically got cut out by Mother Nature, and oh, it also rotates and moves. Like, nah, honey, that's not Mother Nature, that is alien nature. Now, at number two are the skid marks. Now, in June of this year, UFO theorist Scott Waring found what he believed to be an alien crash site in Antarctica because apparently that's the go to landing pad for most aliens on this list. It's located towards the north of the island off the coast of another little island, if you know what that means, because I don't, since I'm not an Antarctica expert. Now, on the image, he claims part of the UFO's wing is folded up and its concave area is severely dented. There are evident burn skid marks trailing behind the craft, and the craft itself looks to be made of some metallic material. The craft is apparently 96 meters long, while the trail it left behind it is nearly 450 meters long, so clearly it was a really rough landing. And finally, at number one is the debated. So even though this one has been debunked, I put it as number one because it was so widely believed to be an alien crash landing site for so long before, you know, it obviously wasn't. Now, the satellite image shows a mountainous island off the coast of Antarctica. Now, in the smooth snow, there's a block of something that's crashed into the snow, leaving a long, deep trail behind it. I mean, and I get the allegation, it's narrow, and how often do things really crash into Antarctica unless it's a UFO? From this list, clearly, so I get why the thought was there. And the trail is quite long, but if you follow the trail back, you'll see the trail goes back to a mountain peak and a bunch of disturbed snow. And how many times did I just say trail in the last 30 seconds? Now, people believe an avalanche occurred and debris was what the object was, or perhaps it was a trapped submarine. I don't really know. Either way, debunked, finally. Starting off this list in our number 10 spot, we have 1997XF11. We all know, or at least have heard, that the dinosaurs were wiped out by an asteroid hitting Earth. If an asteroid were to hit Earth now, there is a good chance it would have have a similar effect, but of course on humans. There have been dozens of asteroids that have nearly missed Earth, and a lot of them have been known and had their paths calculated beforehand to ensure our safety. But there have also been a lot 
of near misses that weren't seen until right before or sometimes even after the asteroid had already passed. There were five near misses in 2020 alone. In 2028, this asteroid is going to come extremely close to hitting Earth, but as of right now, scientists believe that it will miss the planet. If this asteroid were to hit Earth, it would be a mile wide asteroid hitting Earth at about 30,000 miles per hour, which is similar to a 1 million megaton bomb, which would most likely wipe out all of the life on Earth. So let's hope that doesn't happen, or maybe Elon Musk will be able to send us to Mars by 2028. In at number 9, we have the Badlands Guardian. Google Earth has revealed many geological anomalies in the past 10 years, and this one in particular is very impressive indeed. Near Medicine Hat in southeastern Canada, Google Earth picked up what looks like a Native American face in profile wearing a First Nations headdress carved into a rock. Ironically, the clear humanoid looks like it's wearing earphones, although what you're seeing is actually a path and oil well. The resemblance is actually quite uncanny. The face seems to have been formed by the erosion of rainwater on layers of rich clay soil. The face has since been dubbed the Badlands Guardian. From a seemingly natural made phenomenon to a man made extravaganza, in at number 8 we have the world's largest letters. So, what do you do if you're super rich and you want to spend your money on looking super cool? You already have the latest, well, everything. So you kind of need something unique that money can't buy, although actually money can buy you the labour. Hamad bin Habdan al Nayan, <laughs> sorry if I said that wrong, is an Arab sheikh who didn't stop at buying just his own island, no no no, he then carved his first name into it so big it could be seen from space. The letters H A M A D are a thousand meters high and two miles long and have been picked up on Google Earth. The letters extend into the ocean and form their own waterway system, which is pretty cool. Speaking of cool stuff found in the water, we have the discovery of an ancient tidal fish trap right here at number 7. Back in 2009, Google Earth produced a satellite image of a strange V shaped structure in the water off the coast of Poppet Sands in Wales. Since the image was released, it has been discovered that the structure had been submerged unnoticed for a thousand years or so and was actually a fish trap during the Norman Conquest. The discovery led to an investigation by the Pembrokeshire College, who were able to discern more about the trap. A thousand years, seriously! Keeping it nautical in at number 6, we have the SS Jassim Shipwreck. In 2003, a Bolivian cargo ferry hit shallow water off the coast of Sudan and was partially capsized. The wreckage was previously known of, but it was first made visible to the general public via Google Earth, which plainly shows the ship on its side. This is one of several shipwrecks visible on Google Earth, which is slowly but surely making our waters more accessible and solving several mysteries of our vast ocean. Another personal favourite shipwreck you can now see on Google Earth is the S World Discoverer which is off the coast of the Solomon Islands. Whilst there was little to no bloodshed on these sunken boats, I can't definitely say the same for our number 5, which is a lake that looks to be made of blood in Iraq. Just outside Sadar city in Iraq, there is a blood red lake. While it probably isn't filled with real blood, nobody can quite explain why it's such a vivid red colour. The image was taken by Google Earth in 2007, with many speculating it could be from animal blood by a nearby slaughterhouse, although that would have to be a lot of blood to turn the whole lake that red. Others say it's pollution or sewage, I just don't know. Maybe it's just red, like Killer Lake in Australia is just pink. Weird though. An excellent way that Google Earth has been utilised in the past few years is in criminal cases. The roving camera has often caught images of some crimes in progress, helping injured parties discover more about their cases. Coming in at number 4, we have two thieves identified by Google Maps, which is a part of Google Earth. A 14 year old boy from the Netherlands was having no luck in identifying two teens who stole his bike, wallet and phone in broad daylight. That was until 6 months later when he remembered the day his bike was stolen was also the day that he saw a google car driving around his neighbourhood. Lo and behold, as he viewed his local area on google street view, he found an image of himself riding his bike with two people approaching behind him. After the boy contacted the authorities, google released the original image to the Dutch police who found the boys. They turned out to be a pair of twins who were no stranger to crime in the area. 
Case solved. So coming in at number 3 of our top 10 Google Earth discoveries, we have a secret underground layer from the Church of Scientology. Spotted in the New Mexico desert, Google Earth picked up a symbol, two overlapping circles, thought to belong to the Church of Technology, a branch of the Church of Scientology. The symbol, visible only from the air, is near the religion's Trementina base as well as close to a mile long landing strip. It is thought that the base leads to underground tunnels, eventually leading to a vault containing the works from church founder L. Ron Hubbard. So we are living in the 21st century, in fact we're almost a quarter of the way through it, so you would have thought with all the technology available to us that we will have discovered everything we need to know about our planet. Apparently not. Just over 10 years ago, Google Earth helped biologists discover a new rainforest. Not only that, it is thought to be the largest rainforest in southern Africa. The rainforest on Mount Mabu in Mozambique was discovered by Dr. Julian Bayliss. He was browsing Google Earth to look for medium altitude forests as part of a Royal Botanic Gardens Q project. As he looked, he discovered what looked like an undocumented area of rainforest, which led to research teams exploring further. They soon discovered the forest in the flesh, so to speak, and it is a whopping 7,800 hectares. It also houses some species previously unknown to scientists. Ok so up next at number 1 we have one of the most important and life saving Google Earth discoveries ever made and that has to be the location of many of the Cambodian minefields. Working alongside charity Halo Trust, Google has been able to map out areas with potential mines in Cambodia. With the help of Google Earth Pro, Halo are able to survey dangerous areas more closely, allowing them a clear and deeper view where mines could be. Then when they investigate the areas, they are able to defuse many of them. The company has said that Google Earth has revolutionised the way we see and browse the world, which I couldn't agree with more. Hooray for Google Earth! In at number 10, we have the Boneyard in Arizona. Tucson, Arizona is the final resting place of many old aeroplanes. At the Davis Monthan Air Force Base is the world's largest so called boneyard for retired planes. It houses some 4,000 in this desert location. While not first discovered by Google Earth, the Google satellite images sparked worldwide interest in this eerie yet fascinating location, which has since become a popular tourist attraction. The base hosts all all kinds of interesting aviation models in various states of disarray, including the notorious B-52 bomber. I for one really want to go there. This next discovery is a fantastic Google Earth find. In our ninth spot today we have the pentagram. The sigil of Baphomet is the official insignia of the Church of Satan. So of course many people consider the symbol to be satanic. Well here we have what appears to be this symbol located on the southern shore of the upper Tobol reservoir. This symbol is massive, it's roughly 1200 feet or 366 meters in diameter. Many people were wondering what on earth is this for? Some say it's used for devil worship or sacrifices. Thankfully it's not, but it's still something creepy. It is actually actually an abandoned Soviet era camp, and I believe that the lines that we see that appear to be engraved in the earth are actually roads. What a great design, huh? In our 8th spot we have the aliens. Are aliens real? Do you believe in them? Well Google Earth seems to have captured this weird being on a balcony in France. See for yourself. Now what on earth is that? Is it a weird statue put outside to scare away the neighbors or meddling kids? The dude's face looks like it could be the Crypt Keeper from Tales from the Crypt. Did they decide to take these pictures on Halloween? Like I have so many questions. Or maybe it's a real alien. At this point aliens probably do live among us so we're all aliens. I'm an alien. In our 7th spot we have the disposed bodies. Now I don't know what's going on here. Was this an art project gone wrong? Did a clothing store shut down and they had to give away their mannequins? Or is this a scene from Goosebumps? There's something so creepy about these discarded mannequins. Like the fact that they're wrapped up? What if they're the worst? Works of a serial killer. I mean, think about it, okay? It's pretty clever to discard of a body that way. You wrap the cut up body parts to make it look like they aren't real body parts. Meanwhile, they are hidden in plain sight. Please don't get any ideas. I just have an overactive imagination. In reality, it probably just was an art project, just a very creepy one. The guy in the trunk. Now, I have multiple questions for this. 
and I really don't know if I want to know the answers to them. First off, why is this guy naked? Second, why is he in the trunk of someone's car? Like, are we witnessing a kidnapping or is he escaping a kidnapping? Next. What's with the dog? It better just be taking a nap, okay? There's just so much going on in this picture. Let's just hope that he was intentionally naked and intentionally wanted to go lie down in his trunk for a bit, okay? Like this could be used as inspiration for the fourth Hangover movie. We're now at our fifth and halfway mark with Handy Mandy. This next one is not PJ-13, okay? As if that naked man was. But seriously, warning, the next one is for mature audience members only. Because we got two individuals getting frisky in some alleyway. The man can clearly be seen with his pants down, and the woman's hand is in that general direction. So you get what's going on. And if you don't, you're too young to be watching this. Looks like Google is out here ruining everyone's fun. How awkward would it be not only to get caught, but having an image taken of you getting caught and upload it online. In our fourth spot, we have the creepy scarecrows. Located in a field in Finland, we have what they call the silent people, which are a thousand scarecrows lined up in a field. This was done by the artist Riho Kila. No thank you, I'm sorry. I'd be too scared of them like coming alive at night or something. Also the name the silent people, it's creepy. But hey, at least those will scare away the crows, you know, and anyone for a matter of fact. Moving on to number three, we have the mooning. In April of 2018, an English man named Toby Sullivan was out for a walk with his friend when he spotted the Google car. So he did what any normal person would do. He dropped his drawers and full on mooned the camera. Now, I don't know what was running through his mind when he did this, but I definitely did not need to see his peach. Also, for the longest time, his buttocks was uncensored and people could literally zoom into his crack. Okay, it's a little TMI. But when the photo and Toby's story went viral, Google decided to finally censor this guy's behind. Thank God. Gosh. But even with the sensor, you can still fully see this guy's crack, so. Coming in at number two, we have mowing the lawn. Here's another young lad that recognized the Google car and thought, now is my time to shine. This guy was out mowing his lawn when he spotted the car and decided to lift up his shirt and flash the camera. Even though his face is pixelated, you can see he's given Google a funny face, a little ah. You know, I bet him and his family had a big laugh about that one. But seriously, that meant that every time someone looked up his place to get directions or whatnot, that image popped up. Hmm, boy, oh boy. And in our number one spot today, we have the mannequins. We got more creepy mannequins, folks. This time, we know for sure that they are mannequins and not just wrapped up dead bodies. So you may be wondering, hmm, that's an odd way to decorate your lawn. Where is this, a nuclear testing zone? No, no, this is a neighborhood in Santa Rosa, California. Apparently a neighbor complained, probably a Karen, that this guy's fence was too high for the city's law. So the neighbors lowered their fence, but then in spite he decorated his yard so that his neighbors wake up every morning to this lovely view. I mean, there's no rules against having mannequins in your yard, so should've just let him have his high fence. That's what you get. Mm -hmm. 